Hello, and welcome to Cases from the Coop. My name is Sarab Sodi, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Fellow at Cooper Hospital. We're going to talk through a new case today. I had a patient the other week who came in with a chief complaint of abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting. She looked miserable, and she had a distended abdomen, and she had just recently been discharged after having had some kind of complicated intra-abdominal surgery. She'd had three CAT scans in the last month, and I was highly suspicious that she had a small bowel obstruction. Therefore, I planned on doing a workup for it and consulting the surgeon. Now, a lot of surgeons aren't comfortable seeing a patient without some imaging that diagnoses this, and instead of going for the x-ray, which as we know has a sensitivity of 40 to 50 percent, we decided to do an ultrasound instead. So we did a bedside ultrasound looking for a small bowel obstruction, and based on that ultrasound, we're able to make a lot of decisions. I'm going to turn the mic over to Harpreet Singh, one of our phenomenal fourth-year medical students, who will talk through the process of how to do a small bowel obstruction ultrasound and what we look for. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the basic technique of how to do an abdominal scan looking for a small bowel obstruction. And then we'll go over the five important signs that are suggestive of a person having one. So initially, when you begin the exam, you want to make sure you're using a curvilinear probe with the marker to the patient's right. And the goal of this scan is to look through the entire abdomen and visualize as much of the bowel as possible. So the technique we use was lawn mowing, where you track up and down the entire abdomen as if you were mowing the lawn. And while you're doing this, you're looking for any dilated loops of bowel. So as we were scanning our patient, we found these dilated loops of bowel. We were using a curvilinear probe. Uh, we can see some abdominal wall up here. We can see the wall of the small bowel up here, some down here, um, even some down here. And we can tell this is a small bowel wall based on that fluid that's floating back and forth in there. And one of our signs that we can see is that dilated loop of bowel. So any dilated bowel greater than 2.5 centimeters is suggestive of someone having a small bowel obstruction. And then we can take this clip and even measure that area. And here we took an image of that clip. So we're still using the curvilinear probe. We can see some abdominal wall here, small bowel wall here and here. And we went perpendicular from one wall to the other to measure that dilation and we had 2.9 centimeters. Um, anything, again, anything greater than 2.5 centimeters is suggestive of small bowel obstruction. And you wanna make sure you measure this in three locations to confirm your diagnosis. We can also see another sign here, which is this wall dilation. And anything greater than three millimeters is suggestive of small bowel obstruction. So in this next clip, we can again see the abdominal wall up here. We can see the borders of the small bowel down here, and we can see this fluid that's moving backwards and forward, and this bilateral peristalsis is the third important sign of a small bowel obstruction. In this next clip, we can continue to see the small bowel wall. We can see that dilation, we can see the fluid moving backwards and forward, and now we can also see these finger-like projections coming off the wall. And this is the next important sign of a small bowel obstruction called the keyboarding sign. Um, this sign is actually due to that increased interluminal pressure due to that fluid buildup, um, which is pushing against the wall and actually allowing us to visualize the plica circularis on the small bowel. And on this last still, we can see our fifth and final sign that we look for in a small bowel obstruction called the tanga sign. Um, so here we have some small bowel. Um, we can actually see some keyboarding again, um, some small bowel wall with more small, small bowel underneath. Um, and then here we have some free fluid. And this is actually the tanga sign, which is two loops of bowel with free fluid between them. Um, so this is due to this increased intraluminal pressure. It pushes against the walls, increases the permeability, and some of that fluid can actually leak out. Um, and credit for this slide goes to Ben Smith um, since he took this image. All right, folks, just as a quick reminder, bedside ultrasound for small bowel obstruction is incredibly specific, but it is not the most sensitive test. Therefore, if you have an ultrasound that does not show small bowel obstruction and you're suspicious of it, you do need to consider alternative methods of testing. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at the rate Cooper EMUS. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.